All right, so th thank you for everyone joining us today. So um, thank you, for, uh, Sean, for the introduction. Uh, so today we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to start with mindset and then get to how to, you know, generate, you know, using your business, using your, um, you know, generate new leads or lead generation, the people that you know already, and also create new opportunities that you can have during this time. This is definitely um, an unprecedented time, very complicated time. And there's a lot of things that you need to kind of maneuver and you need to change. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, it's going to be a slide, uh, almost like a slide presentation. Uh, we will go through it. I I'm going to try to be interactive as much as we can. And um, definitely we can do some Q&A afterwards, OK? Does that sound good? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so give me a second. Just let me share the screen, OK? OK, can you guys see the screen? Yes. Yes, OK. So that's what we talk about mindset plus legion equal opportunities. Um, we got to start with your mindset. It is so important today that you need to have, um, you know, a positive outlook in um, everything. So you can see the next slide, right? I just want to make sure you see this slide. Okay. Yes. So mindset, you know, the way I look at it, you know, uh, please take your meds. Med is M for meditations and E for exercise, and D for diet, and S for sleep. So meditation each morning. If you haven't read the uh, Miracle Mornings, please do. Um, it is a really good book and get to know what you need to do each morning. So you get up each morning. I mean, you can definitely do different rotation of the, the way how it is, but those are the things that you have to do every day. So you meditate for, you know, you wake up for five minutes, just, you know, even when you lay in bed for five minutes, just to like think about and just like relax, let your mind just be really clear and, and just let it go. And then, then um, you get up, do exercise. It could be walking, could be running, could be, could be doing yoga class, could be signing on an online class and uh, with, um, you know, YB Fitness or another uh, Pilates class, wherever, 30 minutes, <laughs> wherever you need to do. And then, then you do your, you know, take a shower, get yourself all fresh and up, just like how you would do every day that if you could go to work anyway, right? Then making sure that every day you eat healthy as much as possible. Because today we all say, oh my God, you know what? We're not doing anything. You can have a bucket of ice cream with you or like cookies or chips, right? So um, I, I do that all the time. So, I, and I try not to have that. So really do watch what you eat because, you know, and we eventually want this, you know, or, you know, go back to whenever, go back to the norm. Uh, you, you know, you want to make sure you feel good and look good. Uh, and it does matter that way, you know. And then sleep, you really want to get at least seven to eight hours sleep per day if you can. Especially now that you don't have to go anywhere, you're home. So get in bed in time, in a, a time that makes sense to you. And then, you know, then you will be refreshed the next morning. It is so key today. Does that all make sense to you guys? It absolutely does. I don't okay. know about everybody else. I'm finding that being at home, I'm getting more sleep. I eat a better diet. Uh, my, often my mindset is just much better rather than rushing in and out like I usually do in my regular real estate life. Yeah, because you always, you know, before we always like we take everything for granted right so and then we, before we were always rush 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 there's no time to stop you don't have time to stop for at least i don't have time to stop to stop for lunch sometimes i don't even eat dinner until like maybe eight or nine o'clock at night because you're constant on the go right right now you have a really great opportunity right now to actually use this time to change your habits and you know as as scary cal would say it takes about 66 days to change your habits, and you do this constantly every day, you will make a change. Uh, one other thing that's, um, that uh, the Miracle Morning do talk about is that you actually also read um, some kind of book for 15 minutes per day, and by, by wherever time it is, you can read a lot of books, right? And also have a journal uh, in front of you by your bed or wherever it is, and you can actually write a paragraph or two about what you are grateful for and what you like to achieve in life. And that can change every day. You can say a little journal for you guys to write it, okay? So do that and it will, you will see the difference and how you stay 
um, really positive in outlook on things. So the next slide is I love what you do. Okay, I love being a realtor. Do you guys all love being a realtor? Yes. Yeah, we do. Beside, beside that you get paid for a lot of money, right? We get paid a lot of money for what we do. But what is your big lie? So can you do me a very take two minutes with a piece of paper? Write down why you're doing this. Why do you love being a realtor? Why, why does this help you to do what you need to do? Take a minute to write down your top three things that you, um, that, that why are you doing this? So if someone can chime in and tell me what is your big why, why do you love to be richer and what's the reason you're doing this? You know, Simon, I just love helping people solve their life puzzles, the ones that seem impossible. Yeah, exactly. So many pieces so of the jigsaw. Yeah. I, I just love, love that. I also love learning about what there's so much to learn. For example, I'm working with several sets of people right now who are in wheelchairs. I'm learning so much about what they can and can't do, what to look out for and all that sort of thing. And it's a very humbling experience seeing how they lead and they try to lead a normal life. And it may, means that I just don't want to complain about anything. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really wonderful. You know, one of the reasons I love being a realtor is that, you know, I can help people to the next chapter of their life, just as you said and how we can see a smile on their face, you know, that they can really help them on different situations. So give me some other reason why you love doing this. I'm right there with Lucy. I do love helping people as well, especially when they don't see possibilities and they feel overwhelmed and we can help them get where they need to go. Yeah, it's a very stressful process. So that's why they, that's why they look out for someone to you and hire you as the realtor to give them advice and guide them to, you know, to the next chapter and make sure that things is possible, you know. So, and that's why we get paid a lot of money. Just remember that part, right? But beside that, what else that uh, um, you guys have that, why you like to do this? I love when my clients are so appreciative of the job that I do. I got a bouquet of pink roses from one of my clients yesterday or two days ago. And I keep looking at them. And to me, it's such satisfaction to know that they really, really appreciate my job and what Absolutely. I do. Absolutely. And what you should do is that you should just take a picture of that bouquet of flowers and print that out and put that on your desk. And that reminds you every day. Do you want to see that? Why are you doing this? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 And and yes. Like anything like I have a client who Beautiful. you know I saw a house three years ago and she actually came to on my birthday she bought me a birthday cake from um she actually found out what was my, what was my favorite thing to eat and she actually went to the bakery and got it for me I was like wow that is a big deal for a client to do that for me. So actually, I have a picture of it, and I remember. So any moment that in time that your client like appreciate you, and you do something, they do something. Make sure you take a, take a picture of it. Picture worth a thousand words. Those That's moments true. are priceless. Yes, you're right. It's and and when you have those up on your wall, when you either in your home office, your office, you look at them. When you are making your calls or doing your daily things. If something goes not the way you want it, you look at those pictures like, you know what? That reminds me, that's what, why I'm doing this, okay? Great idea. Trust me, it works, okay? And also, the other thing you should do is that, beside money, what is this, by doing a realtor, you should list about 10 things that the, the money that you can make from this, what, what is the result of it? Is it because picking for your mortgage? Is it able for you to take on your vacation? Is it able to, for you to retire in five years? Is it because that you can buy a second home, a beach house, where it is? Write that out 
and put that on the wall at the same time. And when you have, when your mind are trained to look at those things constantly every day, it, it will make a difference. You will see the difference. Um, and it really is a positive energy. And especially in today, where we are in this time, you want to make sure you are rem remember all the good times, all the positive um, outcome that you have helped all the different clients you have helped throughout the year. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Well, Simon, I know I was very impressed. I was with you and your team when you guys at the beginning of the year were doing some of your vision boarding. How many things from your previous year you'd kept those visions in front of you and you managed to bring some pretty amazing things around just by keeping your mind set on what those things are that you're hoping the money will bring to your life. Yeah, absolutely. So th that's another thing. So really good point. So um, vision board, I know not everyone at KW you know, have done it, but I can tell you our team has been doing it. Uh, and the last two years we've been doing it, when we put those things on the board, it, it comes true. I mean, most of them really do come true. And what I put on my board last year, it came 100% true to a point. And uh, so definitely, you know, have all the different pictures in your life or different pe pe people that you care about and why you're doing this, put that on a, on a vision board and put that right in front of you also. And every, every day you look at it, when you make a phone calls or when you, let's say you have a difficult client and something doesn't go your way, you look at that board, it will change your mindset so quickly, okay? Trust me, it, it really do work. Um, I, I truly believe on, the, on those pictures a thousand words and what you can do, okay? So uh, we will move on to the next thing, okay. So we all know that we are in a crisis mode right now, right? Everyone knows that, right? We are staying at home for the last seven weeks or so, some longer, some shorter, uh, you know, and business is not as usual. And it is not gonna change back to what it was um, in February, okay? So the way you do business, that's back then. That's no longer the case. You need to just think of it when they, if they eventually do re reopen up, you need to be up and ready to go. Just think of all the different places that have to still make changes, right? They still have to figure out what are they gonna do with movie theaters? What are they gonna do with gym, uh, um, a workout place? What are they gonna do with a hotel? What are they gonna do with a spa? Like all those social gathering places and what we, we, we have to kind of think about how we could do open houses if there's gonna be open houses, right? So business is not as usual. You really need to think about all that stuff. And you also need to um, able to now is the time to adapt with the changes and every day make changes and pivot that you need to do. I'm every day, I'm making changes. Every day I'm making slight changes on either my, my presentations or the way how I talk to people or my script. And you really need to. And then, then after you're able to realize you need to adopt and make the changes and make those small changes right now at this time, you can reinvent yourself, okay? Just let you know that no matter if you're in a business for five, one year, five years, 20 years, 30 years, is you're never too old or too late to reinvent yourself. You can make changes, okay? If you are gonna think about that, we could go back to business as usual, that's not gonna happen, okay? There's two type of realtors out there, okay? Either you're the one that who's willing to make adjustments and make change and reinvent yourself and how you do business, or there's gonna be realtors gonna be sitting there waiting for the moment to come back and say, well, you know what, I'm gonna just wait and see what's gonna go on and then, then I'll follow and see what happened. If you do that, you're losing a whole quarters of pipelines and what you can do, or maybe even longer, because we might be talking about um, you know, staying home longer because the way how a governor is telling us, he's not even telling us that May 15 is you know, the opening day. Okay, so I'm thinking June or later June. So you have the next month. The next month, there's a lot you can do. There's so much you can do. You can learn so much. You can go to like read different books that can help you learn different things from marketing standpoint. You can go to uh, go to KW, you know, 
um, University. And there's also different program and KW Connect. There's so many things that you can learn, so many webinar. I, each day, I try to sign on a different webinar or different training per day, and I slot that into my time. And every day I learn something new, okay? So making sure you do that really is gonna help you. And you know what, guys? We gotta, this is, we gotta survive this and drive on it, okay? We will, because 2008, I mean, tell me how many of you guys went through 2008? Okay, raise your hand, you did 2008, right? So some of us have, this is not much different than 2008, other than we have, yes, we have the coronavirus. Yes, we have the even extreme of recessions in the market. And, and guess what? There's going to be always someone needs to sell a house. There's always someone going to need to buy a house. It's how you interpret it and how you're able to help them. Again, of course, you do everything with a safety precaution as well. Okay, that you put you put your social distance or your physical distance in place to making sure that you're protected, your clients protected, your team is protected, you know, or, or whoever is protected. That that is safety is number one. But we'll get through this. So you need to. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, and um, I can tell you that I I truly believe in it because we are currently doing business in a very safe uh, manner and we're getting things done, and our clients are very appreciative. You can't put everyone in the same bucket. You can't say, no one's looking, we're not gonna do anything, and we're just gonna wait till the gate open up, okay? That is not the case, because you have people who has to relocate. You have people who has to move into town. So again, you do it cautiously, and do it safely, in making sure everyone is doing all the steps that's necessary to be protected and to be safe. Does that make sense, everybody? It does. Okay. Um, and then, then we are go talk about um, any questions so far? Any comments? You know, Simon, just as, a, as an aside, I went through 2008, and in many ways, this is not nearly as difficult as that. Yes, we've got the virus to deal with, but we're still doing business. People still need us. Um, 2008, 9, 10 was very, very difficult, very difficult. And, you know, financially, we'd had so much that had happened beforehand, many in other parts of the country, that really, you know, led into a really, really tough period. So I think if we can just, as you say, do business safely and keep our mindset really positive, there's lots of opportunity out there coming up. That will be, and we're going to talk about that opportunity a little bit later and what they are. You know, and some of the, some of the cases is unfortunately cases, but, but that's where you have to look at it, and it is opportunity. Um, but also, as you say, the 2008, 2009, 2010, this is, you can remember, this is not going away for the next probably 16 months to 24 months. This is, they're talking about there's a second wave. So this is right now is where you make your adjustment to adopt, to learn from it, and keep changing it. Because when the next wave comes, you know what you need to do. You're prepared for it. Mm -hmm. That you're not like, you know, gosh, you know what? What are we gonna do again? Are we gonna stay at home again for the next six, like you know, sixty days? Uh, you know, just waiting for to get things done? No, absolutely not. You know, before I go on, and I also understand that you know some of us who have to have you know kids at home. You know, they have have distant learning and you have to make sure your families are taken care of and, and your kids are, you know, are well taken care of and they have homeschooling. And, and I truly understand that and I give you guys a lot of credit to able to take on, to able to homeschool the kids when they're little because I know there's more time consuming. As they get older, they, um, they don't need as much attention, but then you also still need to keep talking to them because, you know, especially when you have, let's say, for instance, an eighth grader or a senior who's going to miss out of their whole entire year of their last year of, um, you know, from moving up to also to like to senior prom, to graduations, and, and just making sure that you're there for them. And right now, spend, it's great to spend family time as well. So don't forget that. Your family is really important. And this is a really good time. I catch up with my family, you know, at night. And we try to do family activities as try to come up with different things from painting to doing like games nights and 
Uh, so definitely, you know, do that. And that's really also can help your mindset. And um, you'd be surprised how much you know about your kids after this, because I know more about my kids now than, than before that I, that I haven't spent a lot of time with. You know, so, uh, so, okay, so now we move on to, this is, the, so you understand your mindset, how you can actually have a positive outlook on things. And it's not like that you're not get, you know, it, we are definitely, it's, there's a light coming up, but also at the same time, you have to understand there's gonna be more challenges coming on. This is just the beginning. But this is the beginning of you that able to learn new things and try to adopt them and able to be ready when it's all clear up in a sense to the norm. It's probably going to be more the new norm than what it used to be. So you really need to just adopt and change and then reinvent yourself. It, but reinvent yourself is, is maybe it could be how you do business or maybe you can look at are you doing all the right stuff for your business? And, and that's what we're going to talk about about lead gen right now, okay? So we're going to cover, um, I have to move a little quicker because I think that I'm going to have up to 2 p.m. So I need to move faster. Uh, so um, leverage. So we're going to go back to basic, okay? So when we used to do business, like we got really busy. We get a lot of stuff sidetracked. We don't do it as much. So you need to go back to basic. You, you need to leverage the people you know, definitely. So you lead generate, you capture, you cultivate, you convert appointments. So it's really the four C's. And that has not changed since when Gary Keller wrote the book of, you know, um, how to be a million, you know, million as real estate agent. So you really want to know those four, th four C's. Because if you really concentrate on that, you will constantly have a pipeline for buyers and seller, you're able to get agreement signed. You're able to get show them homes, market this market to sellers virtually. That's the key word today, virtually right now for the next three months, six months or nine months, okay? Uh, you can write up contract, negotiate contract virtually as well. Um, you can now, yes, you can, you know, you heard from the title company, the, you know, the uh, attorneys and also the uh, mortgages, you can do closing all virtually as well, okay? But the key thing I want you guys to really, really focus, and I know that um, Scott had actually covered this in a big way, is to manage your money. Really manage your dollars and cents. Um, because go through your credit card, like, you know, making sure you highlight, you know, three categories, things you must have, three maybe, and things you can just live well. The thing you can live well, cancel them. Cut it down to your bones as much as possible. Because wherever you have left, you can use that dollar and spend it wisely where it needs to go to get you the fullest as possible. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, the next thing is that stop doing what doesn't work. D don't, don't, don't waste your money. Don't, just don't. This is not the time to really try a lot of new stuff. Go back to what you know that works for you. If you've been in real estate three, five, ten years, go. What I want you to do is go back to at least last three to five years. Go back to all your um, all your resources and what are the, your top three to five? Okay, where are you getting all your business from for the last three to five years? Okay, look at all of those and also making sure you write down all those people's names for the last three to five years. That is really key, okay? Good, how are you? And then, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna put them into three categories. You put them into three boxes, okay? You put them, you're gonna list them. List, so you're gonna take two minutes right now to write down your list for me, okay? Write down, you can write down up to 10 and write those out and uh, we'll talk about what is the next step we're gonna do. You're gonna list them and prioritize them and focus. Don't do high in the dark. Okay, so can someone name some of your top source of business? Simon, my top source is my sphere of influence, which okay. comes some, from various yeah. things. Okay, excellent. How about um, you, Ronnie? 
my close sphere of influence. I, I'm thinking I agree with Lucy that it's the people that are you're closest with that you have contact with all the time that you're always talking to that somehow get out there for you and say, oh yeah, you should call this person or. Okay, that's your top one. So what's your second one? Um, past clients. Yes, past clients. Yeah. Past clients, yeah, absolutely. Also, also your raving fans. Excellent, okay. So for me, it's been my networking group. Awesome, excellent. Okay, so once you write that out, right? So, you know, it, this is not in an order. So, you know, open houses, uh, you know, spheres of influence, plus clients, Asian referrals, website leads, and clients party, expiring listing, you know. Then what I want you to do is to prioritize which is your top choices, right? So you guys have pretty much all named the same thing, your top choices. So past client or spheres referral, right? then I want you to go from this prioritized list and now it's down to three to five. And this is what happened. So your top three is uh, really, it's your database pretty much, right? There's no way out of else. Yeah, all the, others, all the other source of things that you, you do, sure, but do you think you get the return, as much of your return you can? No, and also it takes a lot more time. But the past clients, fears and referrals, those are people you know already. Those are people already know who you are and uh, you have a relationship with them. And so when you pick up the phone, when you talk to them, it's a very different conversation than, let's say, you know, expiration, uh, expiry, that you, know, you have no relationship and the amount of phone calls you have to call to convert that listing is to take a longer time. Do you agree or not agree? Yes. Right, and then also your past clients in your spheres is most likely to be the one who's going to give you the referral business than any other anybody. Right, so it's a lot easier to work with them. So definitely, definitely concentrate on those three, and, and we're going to go down to 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 let you know what you need to do. Okay, so remember those whoever your top three is. So definitely, it's, you know your database is key. So if you don't have a database. Please do one and please make sure you have the name, address, telephone number, and email because you will use that list constantly, not just because of phone call, because you also give me emailing them stuff as well, which we could cover a little bit later. And also you could do some, you know, stop by and you know, and and in a safety distant matter. Or you might not even have to be like talk to them face to face. You might just drop off something for them. Okay. Um so the next thing. So I think today message matters. How you find a seller and buy is so important today and match up the motivation. And if their motivation is not ready to sell, you can put them down into your cultivating list and just keep, keep working with them, keep following up with them, keep talking to them. You right now want to find out motivated sellers and motivated buyers. Right now, the buyers that's out there who's looking right now this minute, at this time, this week, those are all serious buyers. That means they are ready to go. They want to buy. So you want to go find them a house, right? And the seller who's listing right now, who, who we are working with, that listing, they want to sell. So you want to help them as much as you can and get, get a buy for them to sell the house. And, you know, and also, you know, and when they get in touch with you, why would they want to contact you in this market? What are you offering them? Like, what, what kind of value do you have? So what you should do is that to list out um, 10 value of you being a listing agent or 10 value of you being a buy agent, what you can offer them. And when you do your buy consultation, depending who you talk to or your seller consultation, making sure you give them this hit. By the way, Mr. Mrs. Seller, this is my value to you. I can not only do I do all this as standard, this is my extra things I can offer you. Same thing to a buyer doing buyer consultations. Like, you know, I'm looking forward to help you, Mrs. Mrs. Buyer. Uh, so I just want to show you that here's an additional value that I can offer you to making sure that you have the best interest, you know, and also getting the best buy that you can and during this time. How does that sound? So, does this make sense to you guys? Okay, so also remember, uh, never 
thing of the dollar sign first, always service over sales. Your service and your reputations are number one. Okay, that's my that's in my book. So I don't ever uh, I don't ever do something to try to make a sale out of it. I always making sure my clients are service. Because when you service your client and when you care about your clients, guess what? The referrals gonna come back to you. The referral business is key because if you do the right thing, business will follow. 100%, I, I'm telling you, I, I, I can see it in my business and it will do to your business as you build your business. Does someone has a story to share that you have like a referral from a past client? Anybody want to share the referral from a past client that you have a past client that referred you to someone else? Yes. Okay, so Robin, why did you give me a your, give me your story? What happened to your past client? How did they refer you to someone else? I had um I had a situation where I placed three family members in three different houses, and you know one was wow. the brother, one was the sister, one was the mother or father, you know, the parents, and they're all three had multiple bids and I, all three got the house. I have no idea how, you know, I know I persisted in getting it, but they all think that I'm like, you can imagine. So they are my big referral source and they just referred a client to me who thinks I'm gonna do walk on water for her and that's a problem. But um, yeah, so it's, you know, I keep in touch with these three family members. We go to coffee, I go to lunch because it was unusual that all three were happy and got the house that they wanted at the price they wanted. So it was really unusual. Awesome. That's great. And, and you know what? You mentioned something, having coffee with them is so key today. So that's something else that you can do as well. Um, each day, what you know you should do is like, go through your phone, text five to seven people that's in your, in your phone and just like, you know, Right now, coffee you cannot meet them. Coffee, right? But you can right. you can do virtually coffee with them. Do you virtually do a Zoom coffee day? Do twenty minutes and say, hey, let's catch up for twenty minutes. Let's have a cup of coffee at you know eight in the morning and and whatever time it is that you can do. Or maybe do thirty minutes lunch or whatever it is that um, you know. It's a really good thing to do. It, it, it's get people want pe people want to see other people's faces today. They do. So um, it's definitely working. So Suzanne, how about you? I know you get a lot of referrals from your clients. So uh, tell me a story too. Yes, um, most of them, yes, from my past clients and from my um, my sphere. My sphere is very big, and then referral business is is good, thankfully. And then three would be open houses. Um, but luckily, yes, I agree with you. Service is first. If you show them how much you care. And, um, and they could feel that and they can, they can see that. And then um, they refer you business. It's great. It's, um, it's been pretty good so far. Excellent. Anyone else have any other stories you want to share? Okay. So the next thing is that, you know, um, in real estate, you have really two main things. It's prospecting versus marketing. Can somebody, can someone tell me what's the difference between those two? Price wise, more than anything, because marketing tends to be much more expensive than prospecting. Correct. Yep. Yep. What? And what are the, some of the items you think that will come up in those th categories? So prospecting might be phone calls or text messages or an email marketing campaign that's not expensive. Marketing might be sending flyers to somebody or postcards or engaging a service to get leads or something like that. Okay. All right. So here's some of the example that you can see again. Now, since everything is so digital, so email focused today, so you can really see, you know, just so just listen it's on this side because you can email them as well. You know, you no longer need to send a postcard. You can save your dollar and, you know, and printing 200 cards and mailing them, you know, at 47 cents or whatever cents, it's, it's you know, it's starts to get costly, right? Uh, prospecting your past clients, geographic informing, which is, it does cost the money, your know, apartments, builders, banks, re renters. Uh, notice I had something new on there as virtually events. 
okay? Uh, I don't know if you guys, uh, in some of my, you guys in my Facebook, and you see some of the events I do uh, virtually. So um, think outside the box. And again, don't, don't try to do someone someone's already done, but come up with something different no one has done. And, and people is going to remember of what you did online, okay? And, um, you know, networking events, community events, and seminar and training. Some of those things are going to change a little bit as the landscape change because of we, how we have to do business. So it'll be a lot more virtually, right? Then you go over to the marketing side, you know, advertising, Zillow, Facebook command, and, you know, online leads, promotion items, the internet, direct mails, broadcasting, TV ads, billboard signs, you know, and you look at it again, same thing how you look at your source of business, you also take top three from here that makes sense for you to do. If you were gonna spend that dollar that you have, where would you spend it, okay? Um, I can tell you that we are doing less on Zillow right now as much as possible because it's not really generating the, the sauce that needs to be. So you need to focus. So uh, in set before you were putting, you know, a dot, just throwing stuff on the wall and see what's working and, and let's just try this and let's try that and let's maybe let's go this way. Focus and use your money wisely and making sure you spend your money where it needs to spend. So the, I think the best dollar value you just want to spend right now today, the way I look at it, is really Facebook and also KW Commands. If you have a listing, start using KW Command. We has also just started testing it and we're starting to get to see some result. And these are coming in now. You can remember, anything that's from Facebook and KW Command, those are nurture leads. You not get, you might get one or two, may want to work faster, but most of them are nurture, okay? So you have to do a lot of nurturing before you can convert into appointment. Does that make sense? I do less on Zillow, less on Realtor.com, because I know they call you guys to like, you know, hey, would you want to buy leads? Would you want to do this? Would you do that? I, I do less and less of that. Um, you know, if you have, what I can tell you through my experience, the leads that are coming through are all through our listings. Okay. So you are helping someone else to market their house dollar by you spending money that you're not going to get back. So if you have listing, if that's the way to go, and if you don't, there's a way that you can do it on Facebook as well, how you can say, our team did this, and as long as you get permission from other people to, to use their listing or whatever it is, and um, you know, focus on your standing. Okay. Hey, Simon, Simon, can I just jump in there? I had a call from a relatively new agent today who does want to promote some things on Facebook, and so I know she reached out to a realtor in her office who said, not only yes, you can promote my listing, but the, the, the realtor was excited, and I think particularly now with the virtual open houses, um, there's gonna be opportunities for realtors that don't have listings to help the listing agent by promoting their virtual open houses. So yeah, there's, yeah. there should be some good opportunities there. Do you, do, how do you feel about people doing that with some of yours? No, absolutely. And, and the other thing, listen, the more you share, the more people can see that listing. The more, my goal is that if I was the seller agent, my goal is to sell that listing. So if you can bring a buy-in, please share it because you will see when you share it, you see it's coming from us. It, it's that like you see it's from our listing. When they go to our lending image, it's all still coming from us. So um, I should be today in, in, in today world that we have become, which we get covered next soon, um, that it's so virtual, um, share as much as you can because the more people have eyeballs on it, the more you get to see it, it you know, why not? So, and, and also before I used to, uh, you know, not to have everyone on my Facebook, uh, you know, friends. Now I'm actually gonna like friends everyone as much as I know, because you know what, when your feet goes into the Facebook, guess who it, sees it? Their friends, right? And their friends can share it and this goes on and on and on. Facebook is powerful. Don't ever think it's not powerful. And if you're not on Facebook, please at least do something on Facebook. Um, at, at least post once a day, at least 
at least like light someone, you know, um, some of the stuff they do, uh, uh, comments on people's birthday, happy birthday, have a great day. Oh, it's like, see, wow, you know what? Your kids are growing, in, like, you know, so much since the last time we saw them. Like, make comments and don't just like someone, but also make comments because I think that's key today so people can see who you are. Because when you make I that comment, guess what? That comment gets onto the feed on that person. And when you make comment on that, everyone who make comments on that post sees everyone like that, their name. So your name keep popping up. So it's about your name. So that's really key today, okay? Simon, um, I mean, you mentioned um, using KW command. I hate to be ask a stupid question, but what do you, you said Facebook. Oh yeah, so KW command. So if you go to KW, there's a training and inside KW connect and I, we can totally do a totally separate class on this thing. So, but on KW command inside, when you have a listing, you can go into, um, you know, inside there's a little tab and you can create um, a, a, a ad onto Facebook. And and what KW have arranged with Facebook, um, you are saving a lot more money than let's say you go to Facebook is by yourself and boost the ad and pay for it. You can actually get better. Um, it's just because it's an ad. It's different than coming. It's it's the way how they position it. I so, would love a training class. Yeah. Training. So and then you can actually do like you can say here's my new listing like. Point, like you can put a couple of like inch. Also, make sure put, put out interesting pictures. Don't just do, um, don't just do the front of the house. Things that is gonna feature the house the most. Let's say it could be the backyard, it could be the open floor plans, and utilize those picture versus front of the house because the front of the house may not be appealing to somebody, versus the inside could wow them. And once they click on that picture, you will get the information. They may or may not be looking at that moment, but you got that you capture the information. Then you, it, it's your job to make sure you keep on t following up with them and talking to them and making sure that you stay in touch with them. Where did you learn how to do the ad that goes to Facebook? Is is it in the library of how to do's? Yeah, there's. Um, I, I believe in KW Connect. There's different. There's different um, classes, and also they also have a. They also, uh, through my coach, we have actually, they just told us that there's a, um, there's actually a, a coaching program. It's not too, it's like under $300 and they teach you all the in and out, what you need to do and get the result. And um, we- Simon, we, so we have, uh, you know, I don't have the schedule memorized in front of me, but I know we've done a, we've done a couple on Facebook as given this interest, we'll do some more. Yeah, you should um, do one, yeah. You can always also reach out to, you know, um, Ron Cardizone is now our tech ambassador and, and Harjo is the one in, from Westfield who we're kind of sharing. So definitely there's, and you can go on um, a KW Connect. And the other thing I would suggest that all of you do on Facebook, go to Command Your Conversion. It's an internal Keller Williams Facebook group. And that's where a lot of these conversations happen on what you can do in command to use it. So definitely command your conversion, join that Facebook group. Oh, it's a Facebook group, command your conversion. Yeah, and, and also, since we talk about Facebook group, definitely join as many different KW Facebook group that's available because the information people are sharing is priceless. Wow. I mean, you can, the things people post on there and the ideas you can get, it's amazing, and people are all willing to share. It's one great thing about KW is the, our model is like, you know what? It, there's enough business out there. We're here to share it for you, and you know you can use it, and and we hope you get more business out of it. You know, so um, just to interject, I just yeah. added um, I just added a link to one of the how to run a Facebook ad out of, out of command to the chat. So if you guys just look on the chat, that's, that's a good place to start. Yeah, absolutely. And the other person you should follow is uh, Nick Baldwin. And he is like the technology guy who's like really big on the whole uh, doing Facebook, com like KW commands and also uh, how to do ads on Facebook, you know, supposedly getting all this lead. Again, listen, there's different price range, right? So you want a different, try to test different market, different price point also. Uh, not all of them you get, you know, gazillion leads, but sometimes you'll get two or five or 10 and you can nurture them. And make sure you keep nurturing them. That's really key. 
So the next thing that since we started Facebook, so the next thing is what really changed in a business is that now we have really have changed to digital space versus physical, and, and now it's really more digital based and physical enhanced. What I mean by that is that, as you can see, you have to do more virtually compensation, virtually seller compensation, virtual buyer consultation, virtual walkthrough video, virtually showing. And so what you need to start doing to practice on Zoom or on Facebook or on Google Hangout, on FaceTime, what's up, Sky, practice with a family member or practice with, a, you know, with an RKW Asian or, you know what, call me up. I'll be happy to Zoom with you and we'll go through it. And because you know what, the more practice you are, just like a toddler, you have to, like, you know, to learn the word 2,000 times to understand it. it. Same thing. The more you do this, the more you get familiarized. Because now, you know what, I'm, I'm actually, I know how to do a Zoom meeting incredibly with sharing documents. I can go through a whole presentation. I can do a buy consultation. I can do a price opinions. I can do everything, go all the way down to writing, signing up an offer last, you know, contract. So last night I had a seller, I had a conversation with at 9 p.m. Obviously, you know, sometimes that's too late. And it's like, you know, let's do a Zoom call, let's meet. So we talk and we, I pull up comms and we talk about the comms. We look at the pictures and we look at the, what's going on. And we came up with a price and we signed the listing last night or virtually. <laughs> Okay, so it can be done. It is you have to change with the time. It's and your new best friends right now, right now, at least for the next three to six months, a Zoom, Google Hangout, FaceTime, WhatsApp, and Skype. Okay. And you do any of those, you know, get really, really good at it because you don't want to have any problems in and also if you get go through a buy consultation, let's say you have, you know, they say, I'm not ready to come out, but we really want to see them. You know what, sure, let's, let's schedule a, a FaceTime Zoom meeting or Google, and let's go through six listing, and you do your homework prior to that, pull up all that six listing up with videos and everything. You do a dry one of it, and making sure you can do the walkthrough with no problems, and able to show them the video, and they will be really appreciated what you're doing for that, and they will stay with you, okay? That makes sense, everybody? Absolutely. Okay. Have everyone has been doing all virtually stuff that you can share that you're comfortable with and, and your experience with virtual? Yes, no? All right, Shannon, yes. I, think we need to, I think we need to do a class on virtual stuff. I, I just texted Maria this very second training idea, a virtual listing appointment. Yeah. But listing appointment, buy consultation, uh, how, how to show a buyer homes that they're not ready to come out or, or they may not be comfortable, let's say for instance, uh, their spouse work in the, you know, as a first, first responder and they, they're not comfortable signing the COVID-19 and they can't come see houses, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things you can offer, say, hey, look, you know what, you can't come out, not only we can do virtually showing, why don't we sit down and schedule a call for an hour, I can show you each of the listing one by one. I can go preview it for you if I need to, or I can see it virtually as well. And how does that sound? And they'd be like, wow, you know, you would do that for me? And that person will stay with you. They will. They, they will stay appreciative of what you do for them, and you're going out of your step, right? So, um, so with that being said, Obviously, I also put one-on-one -on -one appointments on there because that's where the physical enhances. Because after you do all the virtually stuff, when you become serious, they will want to come to show up one-on-one -on -one appointments. I mean, you can't ask someone to look for a house that's, you know, a different price range has different reasons, right? So most people who's looking at houses 800 plus, they get want to come see the house. So when they do that, you need to make sure everyone is safe and you do a safety precaution, you have your gloves on, you have your booties on, and you have some type of mask or face covering to make sure everyone's protected and making sure that they can sign the COVID-19 form, okay? Uh, so with that said, and then we go to the next thing is that, okay, so here it is. To regenerate, time block. Before, you know, we talk about, oh, you can do two hours, you should double up that time to two to four hours per day 
including weekends. You know why? Everyone is home. This is a great time to touch base with all of your spheres, database, past client, open house lead. What better time than this, right? And they're dying to talk to somebody. They're looking to talk to, to, to listen to someone else's voice than other than the family. And, and, and your call is really all about asking them how they're doing. You're not asking for a sale, that, but I'm gonna tell you that will come up. Real estate always come up when we have conversation and, you know, and I'll show you a couple of, couple of the conversation and you can actually then create new conversation from that. And then that's when you create more follow-ups. So making sure you time block every day, it's, you know, seven days a week if you can and do some on weekends. And also you can call them at different times of the day too. No longer you have to call them from eight to 11. People are home all day long. So you can call them from five to seven or seven to nine. Like, you know your client, you know your spheres the best, know the time to call them that they were willing to have time to talk to you, right? Um, the conversation is the same thing that, you know, you have to be able to capture them, connect them, co cultivate them and get to appointment. But the main thing is to follow up. You can have all the lists all you want. You can have all the numbers you have. If you don't call them and you don't follow up with them, that list means absolutely nothing to you. You don't call them quarterly or you don't touch base with them, like, you know, weekly or wherever, who the, whoever your source are, you want to follow up, you know, and if you don't ask, you don't get. This is, that's the business that you really need to follow up. That, you know, today, before statistic was saying that when you follow with someone between, if it's a coley, you followed up between, you know, had to be followed between 12 to, uh, 12 to 15 times. Now it's actually, you now follow those with like almost like 15 to 18 times, even longer, right? So, but with your spheres and your database and your past client, guess what? Those are not, those you don't have to do that many calls. You just need to make sure you touch base with them at minimum quarterly. Right now, you might want to call them a little bit more sooner. Just check on them every other six weeks to see how they're doing. And, um, and that's really, really key. And your conversation, uh, really, a lot of time is different. I'm going to go to a couple of uh, for you as well. But I have to speed up because I, it looks like I have only five more minutes. Uh, so uh, conversations are your five Ws. Who, what, where, why, and when. Who are they? What do they want and needs? Where do they want or need to do? Why do they want or need to do? When do they want and need to do? Or and then how do they want or plan to do it? Those are really your key questions and back, it's, this is back of your head, right? Like don't ask them right away all this question because your first thing you ask them, you get this to be a script to show you later, that is you ask them how they're doing first. And then the, all these questions gonna come in place. And again, you find the right time, the right moment, the right place to ask those questions, okay? Um, and also, you know, why are you talking to them? Why should I give them reason, right? So what we do is that, just to show you, this is something we have done. This, we did this first quarter. And every year we do the same thing, okay? So with our spheres and a database, we go back to them, we gave them like, yes, this is January to March 31st. And look at all the different towns, all the new listing, all everything is under contract. And so, so people know there's business going on. People know that, oh wow, there's new listing coming up. Wow, there's thing going on the contract. It's not, it's not like people think it's like all step, stop and silence. Business is still going on in a safety manner. And also, you know, I think we all need to start going to let people know that, you know, New Jersey governor deem real estate is essential business. Okay, because I have to tell you, a lot of people still don't know that New Jersey real estate is essential business. So, and, and you need, we need to educate people, but again, in a safety manner. So in the, on your right-hand side, we do, again, this is something different we do out, and now you can mail this out to everybody. Again, that's also the last three months, and tell you also um, the list price, the sale price, the number of bedrooms and bathrooms, and these markets. People love this stuff, okay? And you should be setting up with your current clients, past clients, your spheres on a market report monthly. 
that is something that they will look at and sometimes they click on it, sometimes they don't. But guess what? You're at least in front of them and you're sharing information for them. And when they're ready, or when you give them the quarterly call and say, hey, by the way, I just sent you this quarterly report. Did you have a chance to look at it? What did you think? And you know, and you can create conversation that way as well. Again, this is not the first conversation call. Right now, your conversation is about service, about caring, about giving back. And this is our second and third conversation. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're gonna speed through this because I it, because it looks like we we're running out of time soon, and I want to make sure I have some Q and A. Uh, so buyer, right now, share, talk to your mortgage person you deal with, making sure you're up to date on the interest rate and, and what's going on. Right now, buyers a great time to buy rates is still really really low, making sure that they all know that. And you know what? Do a weekly update with your you know at least send a, a newsletter on a weekly basis or bi weekly basis. Make sure this is in there that they can see. Hey, today the rate now is two and you know three quarters. Great time for you to buy. Don't miss this opportunity. And also, if you have serious buy out there, they contemplate it and say, oh, I'm not sure I should buy now or wait for later. Guess what? You know what? You tell them it's like better buy now before all the buys come out and there's shortage of inventory. And when there's shortage of inventory, guess what? What happened? Multiple offers, and you got to pay more than you have to. Right now, go out there and buy the house you want to buy, and you can buy it at a at the fair market value price. How does that sound? Do you want to overpay for your, do you want to pay overpay your house? No, right? No one wants to overpay for the property. So really this is a good time to go out and buy a house. But I have to tell you, the houses that we're putting out there, we are getting multiple offers. There are people out looking, okay? So, you know, and, and uh, Shannon has actually passed those two other articles last week share those articles about like we share those on the things like making sure that when 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 everyone shares something use them you know to share it this article in there the last week share article they share those were excellent they were awesome and we got feedback on it when we send that out to our clients okay so uh definitely and then to seller today's seller you just have to really you know what price price ahead of the market don't chase the market and, and let the market chase after you, really. That's really key, okay? And no reason to overprice today, because if you overprice, your house is gonna sit on the market. The days on market doesn't matter anymore as much, but definitely your price is the most important. If you are overpriced, doesn't matter how long you're in the market, 10 days, 30 days, 50 days, if your pricing is not what the buyer thing, and they don't think has to fair market value, you're not gonna get a buy. You're not gonna get, you know, even local offers may may not come in, but you wanna really price ahead of the market, okay? And then the other things that I'm really big on is that you can be on or out of the market, or do you really wanna be in the market to be able to sell your house? And that's where you find out the motivation from the seller that how motivated are they really sell? Say, listen, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, we get listed at this price. If someone coming to XYZ dollar, are you willing to negotiate? You actually have that conversation right in the beginning, so you know that they get motivated. And you tell them, say, listen, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, the average selling price in your area is at 97.2%. Okay, that was before COVID and before the recession's going down. So now what price do you think that your house is worth today? So those are conversations you can have before you actually list it so you know how to have a conversation with your client when you do get an offer. Does that make sense? And then, so here's some conversation really quickly uh, before I, I have to run off soon. Uh, so uh, one of them say, hi, uh, Lisa, uh, just checking in with you. You know, we are going on week number seven with the stay at home distant learning. How are you doing? And I, uh, your kids are handling, you know, their schoolwork, you know, and uh, are you working from home? Or, or do they need, do you need anything? Like th those are questions you ask and let them talk, let them really talk. And then guess what? They will always somehow mention to you, say, no, Simon, how are you doing? It must be really difficult for you for real estate, right? Then I say to them, you know what? We are taking day by day, hour by the hour. Some of the sellers and buyers want to put things on hold. We 100% support them. In the meantime, we will communicate with them and be aware of the market, pause. But some of us sellers have to sell. Some of the buyers have to buy. We have 
put protocols into place with smart marketings, virtually walkthroughs, virtually showings, and virtual appointments. But most importantly, how are you and your family doing? Do you need anything? Again, you go back to that, okay? It is so key. You're not here to make a sell call, not in today's market right now. This is all about caring, but they also want to find out if they want to dig a little bit more deeper, then that's a different conversation. Then you know that you want to keep having conversation with them more and more and more. So at the end of the day, end of the day uh, do the right thing, service over sales, and business will follow. Be safe and stay healthy. Thank you so much. You guys have been great. And uh, questions, you know, Q&A, let me know. Simon, in there, I heard you offer to do another one, so we'll be reaching out soon. I heard thank that you for, Yeah, you thank did? you for your, okay. gener your generous soul. <laughs> you have a lot to offer. That was amazing. Thank so, you. I think if, uh, if clients uh, complain that they're having a tough time with their homeschooling, we should offer to enroll their kids in the Carrie Buono Pain homeschooling uh, program. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> good. Then you can concentrate in real estate business. <laughs> Oh, that's great. This was amazing, Simon. Thank you so, so much for all the time you spent on this. I mean, what a lot of prep you put into this and you just got everything. Yeah, my pleasure. It was, a, I mean, I could really talk about this more and more, but you know, I have an hour, so I uh, <laughs> put everything in as so much as I think it's the key thing that you need to know. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, yeah, honestly, each of these little subtopics could be a course in and of themselves. So, um, thank you so much, and we're going to get you back on here soon. Okay, sounds good. Anytime. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.